Hello, everyone, and welcome to Precalculus, section 4.7, Inverse Trigonometric Functions. So this is actually going to be a very straightforward topic for you, um, because all we're doing is trig functions backwards. So if I asked you, when is sine equal to one half, I'm saying what angle creates a ratio where, remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so one to two. What is that? Now, of course, you have your chart, or if you've memorized it, you might remember that it's pi 6 or 30 degrees. So you have a choice as to how to answer, but it depends on which one you've learned better. So pi 6 would be the answer. When is tangent equal to 1? Hopefully you know that that is pi fourths. And when is cosine equal to the square root of 3 over 2? Again, pi 6, or again, 30 degrees, and 45 for the pi fourths. So there are going to be times when you know the ratio, but not the angle, and you just have to look at your chart backwards. Now, there is a function on your calculator that does this. You may remember this from really early on in the chapter when we knew the ratio but not the angle, and you used this inverse trig function, it's really important that you recognize that inverse sine, that's how we pronounce that, inverse sine is consistent with inverse function. It does not mean one over sine. So we don't use the negative one to mean one over like we do for exponents. So you may recall that x to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over x squared. Trust me, if I were in charge of notation, I wouldn't let the same notation be used for different things. But while this is a true fact, unfortunately for sine, it is not a true fact. If you want to do 1 over sine, you can write it as cosecant, but not sine to the negative 1. So this is the button. So this is the exact same three questions, but this is how you're going to see them written. So inverse sine of one half is pi six. Inverse tangent of one is pi fourths. And inverse cosine of square root of three over two is pi six. So these three questions are the same as these three, except it wasn't written as a I'm solving for x. It was just straight up what is the inverse of sine at one half? Like I said, this is a really straightforward topic. So I hope that you'll next try the next four on your own. Pause this video, see if you can do them. And now, of course, I'll do them for you. So you are literally going to look at your chart or your unit circle and say, when is sine? At what angle does sine have a ratio of square root of 3 over 2? And the answer is pi thirds. When is tangent equal to the square root of 3, technically over 1, is going to be at pi thirds. When is cosine the square root of 2 over 2 at pi fourths? And when is sine, ooh, all of a sudden we have a tricky one. Okay, so here the, how, this is how this is going to work. You may remember that sine, well, first of all, let's just do the reference angle. You know that sine is equal to 1 half at all the pi 6, but it's negative. And according to our forecast, sine is negative in both quadrants 3 and in quadrant 4. So the question is, which answer are they looking for? Well, ironically, you actually already made that decision with the positive ones. There were two answers. Sine is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 at pi thirds and at 2 pi thirds because it's positive in that quadrant. But you instinctively knew that the quadrant 1 answer made the most sense. So now we have to do the same thing. This is something that the entire world agreed on. So we all agreed on which quadrant we would pick, and they picked quadrant 4. And they actually did it for a really good reason because... In quadrant 4, this would be 11 pi 6, which isn't really handy, but 11 pi 6 
is actually the same as negative pi 6. So not only did they decide the answer was going to be in quadrant 4, they decided they would just write it as negative pi 6. How great is that? So now when you're asked for inverse sine of negative 1 half, you can say, well, I know the 1 half is pi 6, oh, and it's negative, so I'll make it negative. But I do hope that you understand why that's true. Now for cosine, it's unfortunately not that easy. Cosine is going to be your special one. So again, make our forecast. I know that the reference angle is pi fourths. I know that cosine is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 at pi fourths. And then I know it's equal to negative square root of 2 over 2 at 5 pi fourths. And it's equal to negative square root of 2 over 2 at, oops, sorry, that's actually 3 pi fourths up there. At 3 pi fourths and at 5 pi fourths. But then cosine, because the C is positive at 7 pi fourths, so we have two choices for our answer. So the whole world agreed, and they all chose quadrant two. So because cosine is positive in quadrant four, they couldn't use that fantastic little trick where they just said, oh, it's pi fourths, and make it negative. They had to choose between these two. It's still not too bad because since it's the quadrant two answer, you may remember my little trick that it's just one less than the denominator. So if this had been 6, you would have just said 5 pi 6. If this had been thirds, you would have just said 2 pi thirds. So it's really not that terrible. But for cosine, you can't just give the reference angle and then make it negative. All right, let's see what they figured out for tangent. So the reference angle, when is tangent equal to pi thirds, or <laughs> square root of 3 at pi thirds? And again, let's look at our forecast. So tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and in quadrants 4. How do I know that? Because they're all positive in quadrant 1 and tangent is positive in quadrant 3. So what did the world choose? Again, we had the good fortune of being able to choose quadrant 4. But instead of saying um, 5 pi thirds, you can just say negative pi thirds, which is exactly the same, because if you do negative pi thirds, you'll land, it's coterminal, you'll land in the exact same spot as doing five pi thirds. Now, here's the actual bad news. You're actually required to say negative pi thirds. Believe it or not, with inverse tangent, five pi thirds is actually considered an incorrect answer. That's not my rule, that's just the rule. Um, so you'll never see 5 pi thirds as the answer. You'll always see it as negative pi thirds. All right, so here's your little summary. When the given value is positive, super easy. You just give the angle in quadrant 1 that satisfies the inverse function. But when the given value is negative, you're going to use quadrant 4 for sine, but you must state it as a negative angle. Quadrant two for cosine, this is the special one. And then again, quadrant four for tangent. And again, you must state it as the negative angle. So right away, just get out your unit circle or your chart, whatever you've been using to know these. And this is it, this is the end of the section. So I would definitely see if you can do all 16 of these on your own. I would pause this video. But of course I will do them for you. So this is positive, so I'm looking for quadrant one, and tangent is equal to one at pi fourths. This is the same value, so I know it's still gonna be pi fourths, but because it's negative, I have to go to quadrant four, and I'm gonna do that just by giving the negative angle, not seven pi fourths. I look on my chart for cosine, and I see that cosine is equal to one half at pi thirds. It's positive, so there's nothing else to do. But on this one, I see that it's negative. So I still look at the one half on my chart and decide that it's pi thirds. But because it's cosine, it's my special one. And I have to give the answer in quadrant two. 
and pi thirds on your unit circle, or just because you know the pattern, is two pi thirds in quadrant two. Inverse sine of negative one, I'm really just looking at the, at the one here, and that would give me pi halves. But you'll notice that this one isn't in a quadrant, not in a quadrant. So those are special. Um, this is called a quadrantal, and you just have to know all the answers. So when is sine equal to negative one? At three pi halves. Personally, I don't use my chart for these. I really only use my chart for um, pi six, pi fourths, and pi thirds. I know your chart is much bigger than that, but for me, sine, cosine, and tangent for these three are the only ones I use the chart for. Anything else, I actually use the graph. So if somebody said to me, when is sine negative one? I would literally go to two pi and say, well, sine goes up and then down. Oh, at three pi halves, because this is pi, pi halves, three pi halves, it's negative one. I, I can picture that more than I can rem remember a bunch of numbers on a chart. So that works for me. Same thing with cosine of zero. Instead of using the chart, I personally just think to myself, oh, cosine of zero? Cosine at zero, it starts at one, and it looks like that. So it's one. I'm just saying, that's how I do it. Um, inverse tangent of square root of three over three. So the way I have this one memorized on my chart is it adds up to six. So the three and the three make the six. Where I know if it's just the square root of three, then it's just pi thirds. Little trick that I use. Um, it's positive, so there's nothing else to do. But if it's negative, go back up here. When the value is negative, give the quadrant four answer for tangent, but you must state it as a negative answer. So negative pi six. When is cosine negative one? That one is not on your chart. This chart is square root of three over two, square root of two over two, um, one half. This is one half, square root of two over two, square root of three over two. So you'll see. It might be on your bigger chart, but for me, I just look at this graph and think, oh, cosine is negative one right in the middle. So at pi, because the whole thing is two pi. So at pi. Again, that's a quadrantal also. It's not going to be on your chart. When is tangent zero at zero? You could use the chart for this one. Or like I said, for me, these three graphs, sine, cosine, and Tangent, tangent of zero is zero, is the best way for me personally. Sine, inverse sine, square root of two over two is pi fourths and is positive, so there's nothing to do there. But if you have the negative, you're still going to write the pi fourths, but you're going to give the answer in quadrant four by making it negative. Inverse cosine of square root of three over two is pi six. But if it's negative, you have to give the answer in quadrant two, so five pi six. And last two, arctan to square root of three is gonna be pi thirds. But if it's negative, because it's tangent, you're gonna give the answer in quadrant four, but not as five pi thirds as negative pi thirds. So very straightforward topic, you're just getting to use your table more and maybe even your graphs, which is how I personally know 0, pi, 2 pi, um, and pi halves and 3 pi halves. I really, I really think that's a, a great way to know it. When I was talking about graphing, I said these five points are golden. Same thing here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and for tangent, it might help you remember that at pi halves, it's undefined. So. Um, you can decide how you want to learn these, but I've shown you all my tips and tricks. Have a great day.